we have just had a magnitude 5 point, I believe 6 it's now updated to, magnitude 5.6 earthquake near Yerington, Nevada. Um, that's in western Nevada. Um, the earthquake early warning system did go off for that earthquake. I did receive an alert as well. Um, we estimated maximum magnitude 5.8. So again, for earthquake early warning, that's considered very accurate. Uh, we did a great job with the location estimate and the magnitude estimate. Um, so all of things seem to be working well there. Awesome. And it, uh, I, the last number I saw was it happened at 3.08 p.m. Is that correct? Um, let me just stop again. Yeah, 3.08. Yep, yeah, that's right. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then uh, regarding the, the, the early earthquake warning, is, is my shake correct? Is that what you, I'm sorry, you may have just said that. So shake alert is the USGS earthquake early warning system. That's what's operational throughout the whole West Coast. That's what creates the alerts with the estimate of where the earthquake is and how big it's, it is. Um, that all happens very, very quickly using just a few seconds of data. And the idea is to warn people before the shaking gets to them. My Shake is a cell phone app, which uses alerts created by ShakeAlert and delivers them to people's cell phones. So that's what, if, if you had My Shake running and you got an alert, that's what you would have received. Okay. And is the early warning, sorry, I know I emailed about this uh, last time, but now that I have you on, is the earthquake warning, is it intended to send to people's phones to give them a couple seconds to get like under a table or in a doorway? Or is it is it enough to, uh, is the goal to make it early enough to where they could get in their cars and leave the area or? Earthquake early warning is not prediction. So we're not telling you an earthquake is going to happen. We're saying the earthquake has started it's 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 happening right now. The rupture happened and the waves are moving away from the epicenter and you're going to feel shaking. So based on where you are and where we estimate the, the epicenter to be, we think that you're going to feel at least weak shaking. Um, and so that's how the system works. So you're if you're right near the epicenter where the earthquake's happening, then you might not get any warning. You might get a warning right as you're starting to feel shaking. And that's expected behavior. We have to be able to record those ground motions at our sensors before we can tell you the earthquake's happening, right? So it takes a few seconds for that to happen. You might get tens of seconds with the earthquake we saw last week that was offshore Northern California. That was a pretty big earthquake, magnitude seven, and that was just off the coast. So we did see warning times of up to tens of seconds for people up in that area. But what we recommend is as soon as you get the alert, as soon as you hear the sound, as soon as you feel shaking, drop cover and hold on. You're not going to have a lot of time. You're definitely not going to have time to go pack a bag. <laughs> so make sure the goal for this system is really life safety. So we want to get people to get to a safe place, uh, move away from windows, slow your car down, pull off to the side if you can. Um, just prepare. The shaking is is coming. Okay. Um, if this one was a 5.6 and you said last week's was a 7, uh, you referred to last week's as, as larger. Uh, well, I mean, they aren't larger. It's, it's 1.4. But is this one not considered large since it's since it's a 5.6? I would call a 5.6 a moderate earthquake, um, seismically speaking. I know it feels big. That's not to say it didn't feel big and scary to people who were there. But just from a seismic point of view, as far as the range of sizes of earthquakes that we see, I would call this a moderate earthquake. Um, the earthquake scale that we use is on a logarithmic scale. So for every number increase, integer increase, so from magnitude six to magnitude seven, that's 30 times more energy released. So a magnitude five to a magnitude six, sorry, magnitude five to magnitude seven, that's 900 times more energy. So it's a logarithmic scale, so things get bigger very quickly. So yeah, <laughs> exactly what we call them, that's kind of subjective. But um, in my experience, I would say 5.6, moderate, 7. Okay, that's a big earthquake. Okay. Uh, and just like last time, if you got a, um, you you did say you got the alert on your phone. I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you mind, well, once again, like screenshotting that for us? Uh, and then I can crop it. I, I don't have to put any person's face in it. Um, okay. But would you mind sending that over after after? Yeah, this? absolutely. Yeah, I was up, I'm, I'm up here in the foothills today and I did receive the uh, the alert on my phone. So I'm happy to send along that, that screenshot as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um Last week, uh, so here in our newsroom in Sacramento, we 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 were about uh, 230 miles away from last the last earthquake. We're we're probably around 130 miles from today's. Um, mm -hmm. We felt it more. Is is it simply because we're closer? Yes, that's exactly why. So what you feel depends on a few different factors. One is obviously the earthquake size. Bigger earthquake, the, the wind shaking will typically go further. But it also has to do with the geology, the soil, and where you are. Um, if you're on softer ground, then you may feel uh, more shaking, more amplification than someone who's up in the mountains on a rock somewhere. 
you're in the same place you were last week. So that can tell us that the reason you're feeling different shaking this time is probably because of the location of where the earthquake happened. Um, it, we're definitely closer now to this earthquake as it happened in Nevada. Um, and so that's that's probably the primary reason why you're feeling more shaking for this earthquake than for the, the last one. Yeah. Um, this may be a silly question. If it is, just bear with me. Go um, for it. <laughs> <laughs> last time we saw our, our lights on the ceiling, um, they, they kind of dangle. Um, we saw them sway, and they were swaying Mm-hmm. pretty significantly. This time we felt um, the ground rumble, and the lights swayed very little. Um, and last time we didn't feel the ground rumble at all. Um, Mm -hmm. can you explain why we, why we may where we're at? And maybe this is the same answer as the last question, but why we may have experienced the earthquake differently? That is actually a great question. That's not a silly question at all. That's a great question. That has all to do with the frequency of the waves that are reaching you. The earthquake last week was further away. The predominant motion that you're going to feel being so far away from that magnitude seven earthquake last week is the slow, long period waves. They can travel a really long way. The more rapid shaking, the, the back and forth, higher frequency shaking, that we, we call it attenuates. It dies down faster, but those long period waves, they go much further distances. So in this case, uh, last week, you felt those long period waves and they'll make things sway. They will um, activate the resonant frequency of things. My my boyfriend last week was at the airport firefighter there and he said he saw the crane moving and he could see the crane swaying. And again, that's a really great example of long period motion. Today, you're closer. So you're going to feel that higher frequency motion that's happening that didn't attenuate because you're closer. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, is is Nevada prone to earthquakes the way Humboldt County or, or, or Southern California is? Different types of earthquakes happening over in Nevada. So what we saw last week was the Mendocino Triple Junction. We have three plates, three tectonic plates that are moving past each other and pushing into each other. We tend to see larger earthquakes happening in that type of area because um, if we have subduction zones or these larger strikes at faults, we can see bigger earthquakes. In Nevada, Western Nevada, we see an extensional zone. So that area is actually kind of being stretched apart in the crust. And so that's a little bit of a different tectonic environment. We don't expect to see such large earthquakes in that area. Typically, uh, magnitude six or so is kind of what we would expect for a larger earthquake in Nevada. Not to say you couldn't have a bigger earthquake, but just as far as what we would expect to see, um, given that type of tectonic environment there, it's a little bit different. If you look at a map of Nevada faults, you'll see lots and lots of little faults. And again, it's that crust is actually being stretched apart. by the plate motion there. Oh, I think you muted. Thanks again. Uh, are we here in Sacramento perhaps more protected from earthquakes because of where we sit on fault lines? There are, you're, you're right about where the faults are in Sacramento. There aren't as many large faults um, directly under Sacramento. So we would not consider that quite as high a seismic zone as say, for example, Berkeley. Berkeley sits right on top of the Hayward Fault. So when you're looking at some of these larger fault systems, such as the San Andreas Fault, Hayward Fault, those are definitely more prone to bigger earthquakes. We don't have any mapped faults like that under Sacramento. Depending on what like land formation, whether that's a mountain or a valley, if it's Uh-huh. depending on just it, it, does it does that matter? Like, is a mountain any more prone to an earthquake as a valley? Um, do, like, would they not be if they were sitting on a on the same fault line? I think what we're getting at is that for if you had, for example, a fault and you were at the same distance, but you were up on a mountain versus in the valley, perhaps is where we're getting at as far as what you would feel. Because um, as far as what you're prone to, what, you know, that's to do with a bigger picture tectonic environment. But as far as what you would experience for the same distance between if you were on a hard bedrock versus in a valley, you'd probably experience more amplific amplification of the shaking in a valley because we see that in the sediments. So for example, um, in Southern California, down in the LA basin, it's basically like a big bowl of jello down there where once the seismic waves come in, they kind of bounce around um, off of the harder rock that's way deep down and the sediment that's sitting on top just amplifies. And, and that's why we can see quite a you know stronger shaking that's happening in the LA basin, particularly compared with other areas of similar distance. from an earthquake, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, and then, 
Yeah. Are we worried about tsunami warnings this time around? This time, I would definitely not expect to see a tsunami warning. We had the earthquake on uh, the eastern side of California, like far, far away from the ocean. And so I definitely would not expect to see a tsunami for this earthquake. Okay, awesome. Uh, should we be alarmed at all because there was two uh, earthquakes, whether it's, you know, over five back to back, with, I mean, like five days apart or four days apart or so? I would say that we don't expect that this earthquake has any relation to the Mancute 7 that hurt, happened last week. Um, they are pretty far away, seismic spe seismically speaking. So I don't think the earthquake that happened in Nevada today is uh, a consequence of the Mancute 7 earthquake. Earthquakes are happening all the time, um, many times in places where people don't feel them. And that's why they don't uh, generate any news because they, they're happening far out there. But um, yeah, I would say none of this activity that we've seen this past week has been unusual. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then, uh, is there anything you would like to add? Um, I, I had a lot of questions, um, and, and you've answered them all. Thank you so much. Uh, should, maybe I have another follow-up about, like, um, aftershocks, um, I'm realizing, but just, like, are we going to see, we saw a lot last time, we saw a lot of little 3.8s and different things like that kind of occur for a while. Are we going to see that in this case as well? I would expect to see aftershocks from this earthquake sequence as well. Um, I just looked on the map on the USGS website, and it seems that there's there were a few smaller earthquakes right before this earthquake, and there have been some aftershocks already since. So again, uh, if people haven't already, download MyShake so that they can get that earthquake early warning alert in case there's any earthquakes that we estimate to be above a magnitude four and a half. Um, and yeah, definitely prepare for aftershocks if you're living in the area.